Steve, thanks so much for hanging out with us. I know you're busy traveling the country, but it's good to see you back in Atlanta, and I know you like to be close to home with this NFL Network gig, so thanks for stopping by. Well, it's so good to be out here. It's my first time in months being out here, seeing a lot of familiar faces like yours, J. Mike, and everybody else, so I feel most comfortable here, and I'm glad to be here. Well, let's go ahead and start talking a little Falcons. I know your responsibility now is the entire NFL, but this is a team you're familiar with after spending a few years with the Atlanta General Constitution. What do you see about this team when you come out and look at them practice? Well, I think the two main things are, are the two things that fans and everyone probably all see, the offense. There's not going to be any problems here as long as they stay healthy. They're going to move the ball. They're going to score points. And with Tony Gonzalez now, I think the red zone offense now is going to be far more productive in terms of scoring touchdowns. Defensively, it's going to take a while to get things rolling here. They're young. You've got Mike Peterson and John Abraham. Other than that, they're pretty they're pretty young. You've got a new group of linebackers for the most part, a new secondary. It's going to take time to learn how to figure that out. But I do think you know they'll get there. They just need to get there before they get to that third or fourth game because that schedule gets real, real tough around them. So in other words, not time to panic yet if you're a Falcons fan after that first preseason game with the defense allowing the Lions to go down the field. Oh, no, come on. I mean, that's you got backups going against backups. These aren't a lot of guys we're going to see. There's going to be mistakes made, guys trying to impress coaches. No, no time to panic at all. Let's go back to the offense for a second. Michael Turner, 376 carries last year. Article in the AJC this morning about the curse of 370. Guys who have 370 just tend to hit a wall that next year. What does the team have to do? to make sure that he doesn't get beat up because he is going to get a lot of carries. He's Michael Turner. He's a Pro Bowl running back. Or what are some other options they may have to take some heat off of him? Well, I mean, things should not be so much carries but touches. If they can find some ways to maybe swing him out of the backfield in the passing game, do some things where he doesn't take too many direct blows. Now, Michael Turner does a great job of protecting himself, but they do need to pace him so he's there at the end of the season. Makes sense with Jerry S. Norwood. Makes sense with Thomas Brown if he's there Jason Snelling. Do some things just to kind of ease, ease the situation. But I, I think what's going to determine how many carries he has are the opponents. Last week, they needed him, or last year, they needed him to carry the ball because they had a rookie quarterback. They didn't know what they were going to have, so they relied heavily on him. If they're able to throw the ball a little bit more, again, this is where Tony Gonzalez comes into play, that will ease the load. Maybe he doesn't have 370 carries because there's another option there to spread the wealth around. So I think Mike Malarkey is going to be very creative ease the load early and then really rely on him down the stretch. We'll get to the team's first round pick, Ray Jerry, in a second, but William Moore, second round pick, out after some minor knee surgery. Obviously a setback for him to play early when he's missing this much of training camp, but the guy who's taken that spot in the secondary, along with Eric Coleman, Thomas Deku, what do you see out of him? Thomas Deku, very rangy player. I really like the way he can cover that center field action, get side to side, seems to have a very good grasp of things as a smart player. Very important for that free safety position. You want to see how hard he comes out and strikes people. That's going to be very important the way the Falcons use their safeties and kind of dual roles right there. But I think he's going to be, uh, you know, just fine. He's going to have his growing pain. Teams are going to pick at him a little bit, especially if he's lined up on the same side as Brent Grimes or Chris Owens, two corners who are still feeling their way. So he better be ready for things. He better, better be prepared. That's going to be the main thing for him early on. I don't know if it's possible to fill Grady Jackson's shoes physically. Grady Jackson's such a big guy, but Parade Jerry, some other guys on the defensive line vying for that chance to line up next to Jonathan Babineau. What do you see out of them? Well, I mean, these guys are going to have to be very creative, and they're going to have to scheme a lot differently than they did with Grady Jackson. You could throw Grady in there and just put him in front of two players, and he could hold them up. These D tackles they have, especially Parade Jerry, he's more of a gap penetrator instead of a gap control guy. So their schemes are going to be a little bit different. Allow him to try to get some pressure up the field, get in the backfield to get after the quarterback or get after the running back. That also means that Curtis Lofton in the middle is going to have to be a little bit more stout because he's going to be taking on more blockers than he took on with Grady Jackson in front of them. But I think Ray Jerry's and those other D tackles production is going to be based more off of scheme change a little bit up front than maybe some of the things they did last year. Let's round out the defense, talk a little linebackers. Mike Peterson's brought in. Curtis Lofton is in his second year. But a guy you don't hear a lot of, but I know coaches have been trying to get on the field for a while, pretty much ever since he's been drafted, Steven Nicholas. What does he bring to the table? It was kind of tough because he was playing behind Keith Brooking right there. and mm -hmm. uh, You know, a little different. Steven Nicholas may not be the same lateral type runner that Keith Brooking was, but he's a lot more of a downhill player. I think that's what they want out of that position. Now they've got downhill linebackers, which is what Mike Smith wants. 
guys who can come on, really attack the play, really be physical. Steven Nicholas is probably the most physical of the three linebackers. We've seen him on special teams really break people down when he hits them. Very strong player, a guy who really wants to be good. Again, it's going to take some time for him to learn the position well because they're so young there, but I really think he's somebody who can have an impact, force turnovers, which is what they really want to do on this defense with his physical style of play. And I think he's going to be a pleasant surprise. Now, you were here today talking to Coy Wire, some other guys, for a great series you've been working on with On the Fringe, with NFL.com, NFL Network. Anything you can tell us about that, about when to expect some things, or maybe some you know, sneak preview of what Coy told you guys today? Yeah, you know, we do some daily updates on the five players from around the NFL who we call On the Fringe. Five guys, really every man's type player. Players like you and me and all those high school guys who wish we could still play in the NFL. These are what these guys really resemble. They really love the game. Coy Wire, totally inspiring type of player, great stories. Coy was really good today. We got him to kind of show a little bit more of his fun side with some of the tape we're doing. I think we're going to put Coy on, if not late this week, early next week. That little uh, news breaking out of Minnesota with Coy Wire, or not Coy Wire, with Brett Favre, I should say. Which had us delay this piece, actually, because right. you had to run in and, do, and get on your computer really That's quick. That's right. That might postpone the traffic on our website, but it is a fantastic series uh, called On the Fringe. And Coy Wire, based on the fan response, has been probably the most inspirational player of the group. Well, Steve, thanks again. It was good seeing you. Good luck with your travels through training camp. And hopefully we're in situations this year where the NFL Network sends a lot of people to Atlanta to cover the Falcons. We'll be here. Cool. Thank thanks, you, Steve. Mike.